Okay, so domain-driven design, such a rich and controversial topic. Domain-driven design is loved and worshipped by some developers as a software development approach, but it's also hated by many developers as well. So DDD is a software development approach for designing complex businesses. To get started, let's imagine that we're architecting Airbnb. Airbnb allows you to rent other people's homes so you can browse different listings, see the details of the listing, read reviews, look at the profiles of different people in the platform. So in DDD, we want to start with strategic design. This is where we explore the problem space. We want to find all the various subdomains that the system has. So in our case, we might have the listing subdomain, the review subdomain, and the invoice subdomain, among others. Now each subdomain falls into the category of either a core subdomain, a supporting subdomain or a generic subdomain. Now, of course, these subdomains have relationships with one another. That's why we would introduce some context map in which we would describe the relationships that they have with one another. Ideally, each subdomain is mapped to a single bounded context. A bounded context is a logical boundary in which the terms are consistent. The language used within a bounded context is referred to as its ubiquitous language and is one of the most important concepts in domain-driven design since it allows everyone to speak in the same language and the terms in the code are the same terms that are used to talk to the business experts. An example for this is the term host in our listing subdomain will refer to a person renting their home and not someone who is hosting a party. After strategic design comes tactical design. This is when we zoom in on implementation details. If you look at a DDD codebase, then each domain object is either an entity or a value object. An entity has an ID and is mutable, while a value object doesn't have an ID and is immutable. If you take two entities, they are considered equal if they have the same ID, even if the values are completely different, and two value objects are considered the same if the values of the properties are equal. One or more domain objects that always need to be consistent as a whole are called an aggregate. In Airbnb, we might have the reservation aggregate, which is composed of the listing that's being reserved, the host and the guest. The entity that is the root of the aggregate is referred to as the aggregate root, and it's its responsibility to enforce invariance. So in our case, we have the reservation aggregate. It's its responsibility to make sure that the aggregate is always in a valid state. So this could be, for example, that there aren't more guests booked than the listing allows. An aggregate is also a transactional boundary, which means that any changes to it are either committed or rolled back as a whole. Of course, there are many other practices, terms, terminology, rules of thumb that we haven't covered in this video, but I'm going to cover in depth in the coming videos. So if that sounds intriguing, make sure to smash that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.